Welcome back. Starting off today's show, we talked about the popular TV show, The Apprentice. Each week, Donald Trump fires a different contestant who screws up. Well, that would suggest that to fail is to lose, but my next guest would disagree. 18-year-old Calvin Young says his failures in business were the most valuable lessons he learned. Welcome to the show, Calvin. Um, thank you. Tell me about Incredible, the company you formed. Well, Incredible is a student-formed venture that was um, sponsored by HSBC and uh, Junior Achievement. So basically a group of students would come in each week and we would come up with a product and we'd try to market the product, produce the product and sell the product to uh, like, um, people or the community. And what product did you come up with? What did you decide? Um, well our, our company we came up with a gift basket. So a seasonal gift basket for Christmas, Valentine and uh, Earth Day. And how did that go over Calvin? Well, <laughs> Well, first of all, the gift basket wasn't our first um, choice. What so, do you mean? Um, our president actually wanted something very innovative. He wanted to do something that was unique, that was going to be different from every other junior achievement company. But sounds good. Yeah, but because of our time management wasn't that good, and because we had a lot of conflicting uh, like desires within. So our people company. couldn't agree on what innovative we product. And before we knew it, it was two weeks before we had to sell our product. Yikes. So we decided to compromise. So maybe this person wanted this and this person wanted this other thing. We come with a gift basket. It would be easy to make, easy to um, market, and easy to sell. How easy it was to make, market, and sell? Oh, it was actually. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was pretty easy to make, but to market it was, and sell it would was a little tougher because this gift basket we would gather stuff from maybe the dollar store or something and we would put it together. But then, as we were going to sell it. it it was just wasn't worth it for like the markets so of the community. They wouldn't. The people would just be like, "Oh, this isn't worth it. This isn't. Uh, I don't like this product or whatever." And so, now I understand Junior Achievement provides mentorship and assistance to help you with your business. What happened there? I mean, with your mentor, didn't he advise you this wasn't a good idea? Or actually, um, they did. They did give us a lot of advising, but a lot of it is to our students. So we have to come up with it. So they, they can guide us, they can show us the ropes, but they can't actually actually give us, like, they can't spoon feed us. So you know right. the saying, you can give a man a fish, he'll eat for a day, but if you teach him how to fish, he'll eat for a lifetime. Right. So it was basically like that. It doesn't sound like you did much fishing though. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned uh, that communication was a big problem in your company. How do you think that led to your downfall? It wasn't too bad of a downfall because in the end we did have a 100% return on investment. Oh, okay. It's just, well, at the beginning, we were, we were just kind of blindly. We didn't really know each other because we were all from different schools and stuff, right? So we didn't really talk much, but then after a little bit, after maybe the first campaign, we start to talk more, we start to communicate with each other, actually became pretty close to the production, and I would help him out with like, like the production. I would um, drive to like the dollar stores and buy the stuff with him. And um, it, was, it actually turned out pretty good afterwards, but it was from our first failure that we learned that communication is very important within a company because you can't, like production can't go blindly buying stuff with like all this cash and, uh, and HR can't just go like reckless, recklessly giving out bonuses to people, right? So we, we need to communicate with each other to understand where we stand and understand what our actual goal is. Speaking of cash, I understand that you said you had too much cash. How can the business have too much cash? Well, at the beginning, we initially started off with $1,000 for our um, initial startup. So this might be because we were just too, we weren't willing to take risk. We were too afraid that we might not have enough money. So we just took like $20 from each person as our um, IPO. Well, this, we only ended up using around $400 of this cash. So which left $600 just sitting there doing nothing. So the cash was just in the bank, just like rotting away. So basically, in the end, our return on investment was very low because of this. You didn't use a lot of the money. We didn't use made. a lot of the money. So this kind of taught me how money sitting there is useless. You shouldn't, if you, money just, yeah, money sitting there is useless. You can't just have like a hard, large amount of sum of cash there. You should use it or give it back to the shareholders. But with our case, we weren't able to use it because we didn't have enough manpower, we didn't have enough time to use all that money to produce all that product. You're sort of alluding to it all along the way, but I'll ask it more directly. Why do you think it's important to make mistakes in business? 
a lot of people would say, oh my God, whatever you do, don't screw up, don't make a mistake. Why do you think the opposite, that it's important to make mistakes? Well, Junior Achievement gave us this chance to, to make mistakes. And I think that mistakes are very important for business because failure is the stepping stone to success, right? So if you learn, if you make a mistake, you will remember this. It will be in your back of your head for the rest of your life. You will know, oh, I made that mistake. I'm not going to do that ever again. But if you succeed, you might just go by. You're going to celebrate. You're just going to go by and not really remember. It won't really be that hard at uh, the back of your head. But so, do you ever feel, did you, were you disappointed? Or like uh, when it didn't go well, did you feel somehow you let yourself down or the company down? I mean, how did you work through that? Because I agree with everything you're saying that it is important to make mistakes, but how do you get to that place? I mean, you're just instantly, oh, I'm so happy I made a mistake. Well, when you make a mistake, you're going to be disappointed for sure. But then you're going to take that little amount of time to like mope around. But you have to think about your mistake and actually see how you can fix it next time. When, the, when it arrives, the next time this problem arises, you will know how to tackle it because you've been through this already. You already failed it once. So you're not going to go and fail again. You're going to learn from your mistakes. You're going to pick up from what your, um, your shortcomings. And you're going to know what to do. Has this totally turned you off business altogether? What are your plans no, for the future? Um, actually, uh, this upcoming September, I'm going to go to the University of Waterloo to study accounting and, uh, in their AFM program. So you're, and you were the accounting person on yes, this project? Yes, I was the VP of Finance. So you're not discouraged about being an accountant? <laughs> no, not yet. What do you think the next trend is in business if you look now at things in the future? Maybe when you are, when you graduate from university, where do you see business is heading? What are the things that people should be looking out for? I think one big trend in business is the internet. The, that the business should really capitalize on this new um, virtual world or this new uh, world because right now the internet, it's, it's rather new and there's like new things like Facebook, YouTube and like all these other things that aren't really popping up too much of a profit. In the stock market, maybe they're having like a large selling price or something, but the potential isn't really uh, reached. So I think uh, we have to find a way to actually tap into this industry and find a way to actually make profit from this, uh, this new trend. Well, good luck at doing that. If this was The Apprentice, I think the last thing I would say to you is, Calvin, you're fired. <laughs> but it's not. So good luck in the future at Waterloo. Okay, okay thank you. Well, that's it for this edition of Ad Issue for Teens. You can go to our website, ichannel.ca, to watch this entire episode online. Just click on Video on Demand and Ad Issue for Teens. And you can email your feedback to comments at ichannel.ca. I'm Kevin O'Keefe. Thanks for watching. This next one,